you're playing throughout your freshman year, bring me into your sophomore year, and it's your sophomore year when you have this accident and this inj injury, correct? At junior, at junior year, so my junior sophomore year? Yeah, so my sophomore year, I actually started to excel a little bit. I started to get my feel on down there where I was playing. Now I know the position a little bit more, start doing my thing out there in the rotation, balling out. You know, I'm happy, you know, I'm, starting, I'm happy now. I'm not 230 pounds no more. And this year I'm 260. I'm still fast moving around. I have a great sophomore year. Junior year comes, I bulk up even more. I'm at 275 now. Starting to play, ball out again. We're having, we were at four, we were three and two going into the game. I got hurt right in the middle of the season. And that fourth quarter of the game comes. I'm running down on kick a lot like I, I, I don't want you to go there yet. I don't want you to go. I, I wasn't. I wasn't gonna go there yet. Okay, there. I go ahead. Say, I was gonna say that game, everything was just normal, and my life changed there. But like I said, I, I was finally excelling and I started to say, you know what? Coach was right. Coach knew who knew this plan, and I put my trust in these coaches, and I'm having the time of my life now. So literally, when it came to that fateful day, you're thinking to yourself, Coach was right. I'm having the time of my life. I'm balling on another level. I'm really doing this. Like, this is the mindset you went into that game with? Oh, yeah. I, like I said, now I'm comfortable. I'm a junior here. I'm about to be midway through the season. I done got myself in shape over all these years. Because people don't realize, and with football, you get in college 12 opportunities to play the game. But the process behind the scene, those other 333, 33, I mean, 353 days that go into it of working hard, sacrifice, grinding, self-evaluation periods, learning to work together as a team, becoming a leader of a team, you know, all these, all these types of things. Finally, you know, when you get to go out there and play the game, it's like, yes, I'm ready. This is what I'm built for. This is what I've been sacrificing. This is what I've been doing. And yes, I was having the time of my life. Whoa. Okay. Let's talk about the fateful day for, for one second. I don't want to talk about the game yet. I want to talk about leading up, the morning leading up to the game. What are your rituals? What are some things that Eric Legrand did every day? And thinking back now, did you do anything different? Was there something that, you know, there, there are people who are just superstitious. Every minute, you know, every time before a game or every time before they do something on a high level, they follow a certain routine. Was your life in any way, shape or form out of the norm or did you do things exactly as you always did it before a big game? That every time I did it the same. I always went a pregame meal before, like the night before. I got to hurry up. I got to be the first one, get my meal, eat my meal, be the first one over to the shake machine. So I, because I always say when everyone goes over there, they be putting all that stuff in there, gets all mixed up. I had to be the first one in there so I could make my own shake first before they dirty it all up, did it, brought it up to my room. You know, when I come to the meetings, I always have my same seat, sit in the same seat in the meeting room. But then the day of the game, but I, was, I don't know why I used to put on my left sock first, like one of those weird ones. Game they put on the left sock first, then the right sock. All this pregame, this was 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 crazy. I would go out to the field always before pregame and you know check out the stadium. This time we were at MetLife Stadium. We weren't at our home stadium. We were at MetLife right there, and it was the first time you know being able to play there in a new stadium. And I remember looking in the camera and there was video of me saying, "We're out here at MetLife Stadium." We're ready to go, get ready to play the Army Black Knights, and we're going to keep on chopping all day long. And that was just my routine that I would do every single game. So nothing was different. There was nothing that day that you did anything different? Only thing that was different was instead of getting four or five tickets, that game, somehow, some way, I was able to get 20-something, 20-plus tickets. And literally, family and my friends all seen my last game. And they don't play oh. football. Oh, Wow. 20 wow. plus tickets. Even the local pizzeria guy and his family were there. Crazy to think about. I got 20 plus tickets for that game just because it was at MetLife Stadium. A lot of the kids, you know, from Florida and stuff, their families don't come, so you take their tickets. Usually I get like, you know, four, five, six, seven. This game, I had 20 plus tickets. And it's crazy to say that was my last game I've ever played. Okay. Set the stage. You're at MetLife Stadium. The Giants play there. 
-hmm. Brand new. October 16th, 2010. Mm -hmm. Did you start that game? Were you having a great game? What was the actual game like itself leading up to your injury? So the game was actually, this was crazy. So it was going back and forth. And earlier in the game, I had missed a big sack opportunity where I was chasing the quarterback down and he planted and he scrambled away and got a big first down. So I got mad at myself. But later in that drive, when I was in, back in the game, there was a big uh, third in inches. And I remember boom, busting through the line, made the tackle, made the stop. And I remember my, my bell got rung a little bit because I went full speed with the fullback. And I remember getting up and I started walking towards the other sideline. And my teammate was like, yo, E, yo, E, we, we got to go this way. I was like, oh, <laughs> snap. And I ran to the other side and then we, I sat down and we punted the ball. And we, we ended up going down scoring and tying the game. 17 to 17 with five minutes left. And then boom. Okay. And that next kickoff. After I just made a big play, bell rung a little bit. But we recovered, I was fine. We go down, score a touchdown, it's a tie game. And now there's five minutes left in the game. So the play that changed your life, it meant something. You guys are tied. This wasn't just some random play. You were playing to win at this point. I was running down that field. I said to myself, if I can make a big play here, get them, you know, be as the you know, 25 yard line in, we can get a quick three and out, a quick punt, get good field position. So our team, our offense has enough time to drive down the field for a game-winning drive. That's my mindset running down that field. How much do you remember about the play itself? Oh, I remember it all. I remember everything until I got into the ambulance and they started driving away. Okay, you walk our, our audience through the exact play, the exact play, how it happened, why it happened. Mm -hmm. Just give me your mindset going into that play. Mm -hmm. So it's, like I said, it's the kickoff. So that game, I was facing a double team, which means two guys came to block me. That was that was the kickoff the return design that they were running. But on that specific kickoff, I was able to split the double team, we call it, which means I was able to get right between the two. And I had them behind me now. So now they're behind me, and I'm running full speed. So I said, you know what? I got a good 30 yards, 30 yard start on this tackle. I'd already, because we already did the kickoff so many times. I knew once I got past those two, that it was gonna be my job to make the tackle. So you know, I'm sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. And I said to myself, as I'm running down, do I want to use my head or do I want to use my shoulder? I said, this is about to be a big collision because I got some momentum. I said, you know what? Let me put my head down on the side and use my shoulder on this play because I don't want to have my head in the tackle. But if you ever see the video before, my teammate actually gets down there about a half a second before I did. He dives. He trips the guy up. The guy, Malcolm, his name is Malcolm Brown. His body twirls in the air. I put my head down thinking it was going to go on the side of his body and I was going to tackle him with my shoulder and his body twirled in the crown of my head, goes right into the back of his shoulder blade and boom. And wow. I'm on the ground motionless and I can't breathe. Wow. What exactly was damaged? I fractured my C3, C4 vertebrae, which is the bones in my neck. I was, I, and that controls a lot. I paralyzed my diaphragm at the time. I I, the last thing I remember feeling was my heels hitting the ground. My body went stiff and my heels went slowly hit the ground. And my trainers come up to me, Eric, is it your head or your neck? And I said, I can't breathe. They're like, can you feel this? Can you feel that? And all I could say was, I can't breathe. Now my head coach, Greg Shiano, comes running out immediately. He looks down and goes, E, you have to pray right now. And I, when he said that to me, I can't move. I can't breathe. Now my coach is telling me I have to pray. I'm thinking my life is over. That's it. And I'm not going to lie to you, Sean. At one point, I closed my eyes and I said, you know what, God? Take me at ease. And as nothing happened, I went back to bed, opened my eyes up. And now they had brought the board out to lift me up. And they rolled me over a little bit and they put me on the board. And when they lifted me up, I caught a gasp of air for a second. So I said, maybe I just knocked the wind out of myself. I got a full body stinger. I've had a stinger on my shoulder before where it goes numb and it comes back. I said, you know what? Full body stinger. Let me give that thumbs up. You ever see when somebody's getting carted off to the field, they get yeah. thumbs up? I said, let me give a thumbs up to the crowd that everyone else is going to be okay. When they give that thumbs up and it just felt like there was a 
you know, 3,000 pound elephant laying on my hand. Couldn't move it. I get to the end of the end zone. My mom and my sister are now down on the field. My mom's hysterical. And I'm just like, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. I said, I'm trying to calm her down. They put me in the ambulance. They put an oxygen mask on me. I'm thinking, you know, once they put this oxygen mask on me, I'll be able to take that deep breath in and out. I went to inhale and I couldn't exhale and I blacked out. Now I'm on my way to the hospital. Okay, a couple of things stand out to me. You can actually remember the last time any, the last time you felt anything. Oh yeah, I remember my, I remember my body went stiff and my my legs were going sticking straight out, and then all of a sudden it just went shh, like down, and my heels hit the turf, and then after that, it went immediately to I I can't breathe. And I just, it, also, when your when your coach Coach Chiano comes up to you and tells you to pray, obviously, you know it's serious. This is not a normal stinger I'm dealing with. Yeah, but you also time, said, go go ahead. At the time, I, I I said I can't move. I can't breathe. The scariest part about the whole thing was not even be, not being able to move, not being able to breathe. You're like, <sighs> and you're gas, and you know that you're t- you you just ran down the field. You know, 50, 60 yards. You know, you're already tired too. So not being able to breathe and him telling me I have to pray. So that was it. And and you really at that moment said, God, take me. Take me. I'm at peace. I, I, that's all I thought I could do. Wow. I, at, at that moment. How old were you at the time? I'm, I'm 20 years old. I, 20, I turned 20 the month before. And I, I like I, I wasn't. The day I said, God, take me at ease. Believe me, I wasn't ready to go. <laughs> I wasn't. But at the time, I said, you know what? If this is it, God, just, just let this be, let this be, you know, seamlessly. And then I closed my eyes, but as I closed them, nothing happened. It wasn't my time. And I, I thank God for that. What day was the what day was the game on? Is this a Saturday? It was a Saturday afternoon. This injury probably had, I think it was a one or two PM kickoff. So it was probably around like four o'clock, you know, almost the end of the game. What's the next thing you remember after passing out? I remember getting so you know in movies when they they're showing somebody getting to the hospital, it's like boom, boom with the heartbeat and yeah. they're going in and out. Yeah. That's real. That's real life stuff. I remember getting to the hospital and it's like boom, boom. I'm looking up and I see a bunch of lights as I'm getting carted down the hallway. Boom, boom, you black out. You wake, I woke up again, and now I'm in a room with a bunch of nurses and doctors, and it sounds like they're speaking a different language. It's like boom, 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 boom. I black out. I wake up one more time, and now I'm in a room by myself. With a bunch of monitors and sounds just beep, beep. and then I blacked out and I don't remember anything until Wednesday and that injury happened to me on Saturday. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.